So, the first person's out of the traps, as they say, announcing for the Douglas South seats, of course, since uh, this all was it's coming up with Bill Malarkey dying. It was one, now it's two. Claire Christianary is joining us. Hi. I think we so just check now who you're related to, because the, the, the internet's alive with all sorts of who you are related to. No other politicians? No, none. Right. Um, I'm not the granddaughter of uh, Claire Christian. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not related to David Christian, although he is a good family friend. Right. Welcome to the world of the internet. Isn't yes. it funny how these things, <laughs> they start running and then you don't know. Anyway, I want you to talk to you about what you'll stand for, what that sort of thing. So uh, yes. I know you haven't done your manifesto yet. Yes. So if you were stopping people on the doorstep, what would be the sort of points you want to raise that you particularly are keen on? Let's try that. Yeah, I think, um, I think obviously, as you say, I haven't, haven't uh, done my manifesto yet. And I think going to the doors, do knocking on the doors is really important and actually uh, finding out what the constituents want. Um, but I guess from, from my perspective, my uh, proven track record already is listening and hearing and making a difference uh, for the local companies, the workers of the Isle of Man, the self-employed people during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so maybe that's a business sort of angle you're coming from? It is a business angle, but it was obviously a lot of individuals that I was speaking to on behalf and um, working as a conduit with the government to get them support. Um, so it wasn't just a business, it was a self-employed person. Um, it, could, it could be anybody from a, a hairdresser to um, a local dog firm, a, a dog agency or something mm -hmm. like that. But um, it's, uh, yeah, it was really important to, um, to identify that basically we're going through an economic crisis. We're out of our health crisis now. We're going through our economic crisis and having the right person in the government um, to help us get through that. Um, getting job security, that's obviously a really, really important factor for me. Um, and then also uh, make creating jobs as well. Education is really important. Um, that's the fundamental uh, support to jobs, etc. cetera. Um, creating skills, etc. cetera. So it's, it's, it, that's kind of around those ideas. The government's kind of involved you, that you were on one of the webcasts. Uh, you've given yourself over to one of those uh, Facebook groups yeah. helping out businesses. How I mean, that? I, I took the, uh, the the demands of the people right to the government door, you know, and I said to them, you need to widen your um, support to reach more people um, because the Isle of Man is made up of small individuals and companies. So you went telling them that? Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I, I basically worked and um, united the uh, the individuals to make one voice, um, and we had some uh, two and a half thousand members of the local companies page, Facebook page, um, and it was it was taking those different sectors and, and speaking for them on behalf and bringing them together and us all helping each other. Now you're on the record saying the government's done a good job. Yeah. Is that something you now regret as you're standing, or, or do you feel not you're going to be government friendly when you get in? You're not <laughs> going to be uh, an independent. Uh, no, I, I completely understand, yeah. and, and I think you know. You know the government has done a good job because we're sat here talking, mm -hmm. um, and that's very un unique around the world. So, from the health perspective, that's absolutely fantastic. From a, a, a government support, I know that I helped create and change and shape that, um, and so now I want to go on the inside and see if I can do that further. And I, I'm, I would make the, an excellent candidate to be able to do that. How do you ban balance your MHK? work and you being a businesswoman or, yes. or do you be yeah. giving one up or doing both? Or so um, I have thought about this obviously because I love my business, it's my passion. Um, I have a really good setup in that the, my staff and they're, they're well established there. So obviously I would still overall run it and make sure that it works and runs smoothly. Um, we've been doing successfully well um, since the, we've reopened in the COVID, uh, since the COVID lockdown um, and uh, it, it runs like clockwork even with me out there. Not the Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm I'm really fully committed to this, but yeah. I want to keep an eye on on the business at the same time. As, sure. as a, I mean, lots of local business people do take this um, challenge, mm -hmm. um, and and I'll be honest with you, Paul, it, it's a really it was a difficult decision to make because when you challenge outside of the government, it's a lot easier. You've got the support of everybody because they want to be on your side. But making that change and keep putting yourself up to say I want to go on the inside and do this, that's the hard decision. And and that's the hard challenge to do and I've got the, the, the conviction to do that for the people of the Isle of Man. So would you be a national member of Timwald or do you have still time for Douglas South? 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to balance that? Um, well, I mean, obviously, uh, my constituency is is paramount, and I've got to get round, knocking on doors, hearing what's really important yet? to them. I haven't started yet. Right. Um, okay. Announced last night. I know um, we're doing this so, straight away. So, um, yeah. and I, I obviously, what the most important thing is, is we have an election date, um, so that we can yeah. uh, c we can obviously communicate that to the constituency as, as I go mm. around. Um, but yes, absolutely, I want to speak for the people and and the constituency and the electorate, and I also want to speak on a national level. In the, as an MHK in the House of Keys. Any local issues, particularly that you can think of for Douglas South? Is there anything that stands out? What's, I mean, what's the breakdown of the um, constituents? Well, it's interesting. I've had several meetings today with councillors, um, Douglas Council, and I want to um, be an MHK that really works really closely with the Douglas Councillors because it, if, if we don't work closely together, then that affects the constituents. So it's really important that we do that. And that hasn't been the best dialogue has there sometimes? I, I, I understand that it's um, it possibly might not have been what they had hoped for in the past but um, you know I'm coming in with a fresh fresh mind and not looking at it in any other way than I just want to make sure that people get the right person that stand for them mm. and then we can work together. So to we're we talking car park charges and things like that or <laughs> how micro do you want to go? Um, well I mean you know it's, it's important we work together and understand mm. understand the uh, constituency needs. Um, so in answer to your question what do I see initially um, obviously housing is is, uh, is really important um, regeneration and re you know making sure that um, the right funding is going to to uh, to regenerate those uh, poverty areas mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really just getting a handle on that um, and, but I'm, I'm ready to hit the ground running and start and start finding out all of what people need if you could pick your department if you got in I'm thinking you're gonna say Treasury to me would that be right do you have uh, a, it, anything to say about that? It like? would be an honour to serve on any department. And Are you happy I know to work within government? Absolutely, do? and and I know that's probably an on the fence line, um, but I, wherever I go, I will get the right experience and give my all. So that's really important. It, I, I don't want to be pigeonholed for one area just because of my business experience. Um, I want to be able to go and gather lots and lots of information around the different departments of the government. So. Uh, you have no previous political experience as such. Uh, no, the only political experience I could I could say is, is I, I have the same concerns as you do as a constituent. Mm -hmm. You know, we we all w worry about our jobs. We all worry about um, you know security, the econ a recession, and things like that. So we all have our political views, and maybe more of us have a political view now, just after the pandemic. Um, so I think obviously it's naturally come about. Okay, we've got this weird situation, we haven't got a date yet, but people are coming forward. But also, you've only got a year as such, you know, yes. give or take. Yeah. The challenge to that, is that good because you get that year in under your belt first? I mean, so, uh, yes, by elections. Because, because that, what's actually really important is the short term is the economic crisis. So you need somebody in this next year who can deal with that and hit the ground running um, and, and look at the factors that we're all facing. And that's been very similar for the last six months. Um, and then in the long term, we need to look at that and how, how what we can do and strategies to keep building and building and building on, on job security and, and creating jobs and, and economic economic stimulus. <laughs> you, have you been to Timwald? Have you seen the operation? Do you understand how it all works? I, I've followed it you mm. know uh, over the last three months having had a little bit more time on my hands uh, with, with a lockdown uh, so that's been quite interesting um, but yes I'm, I'm due to go in on Tuesday and, and have a sit down and, and see what, go, what goes on. And what ambition do you have? I mean you're in for the long haul. I mean, you, you see, so haul. this would be a life-changing sort of direction, Absolutely. would it be? Yeah. Okay. So, if you had the choice, I know this is a bit unfair, but if you had the choice of which department you'd like to one day to be the ministerial government of, governor of, have you got one there in mind? Um, I'm not. You're not. You're not going to get it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's you're, not, you're not going to. Uh, yeah. I, I. You know. I. I'm not arrogant enough to okay. think that I can. I, I can do well or, or do be the best person in that, Wh what I have to do is I have to go in there and I have to keep an open mind and see where my uh, abilities fit the b best criteria and mm -hmm. the best role. And that's what I'll keep an open mind to. Women are underrepresented. Do you think that's a plus for you to, to stand? I mean, it all sounds sexist to ask that sort it does. of question. And, it? It, and you know what? The, the really important thing, and I say this to all the constituents, you know, vote for the person that you want. Don't vote because of, uh, you know, sex or anything like that, who they are. What? Just vote for that person that you want. I've been there, and we all, we're all constituents. We vote for the, the person who's going to tell you the truth, the person who's going to be reliable, and, and you hope that, that, that the person that you vote for will do that. And I say that to, on uh, all the candidates. Just just really look at what they're standing for and, and hope that you're going to get the right person in. And 
if it didn't work out for you this time, would you come back again? I, I mean, would, yes. That's I, I definitely would. You know, you learn so much the first time round. So if I'm if I'm unlucky in this um, uh, first by-election, then I definitely would go again for the general election.